Hi, this is going to be a very quick introduction to uh, heat transfer by internal convection. Um, what it is and why it's different from external convection, which you should be familiar with already. So if we just look back at an, a classic external convection heat transfer problem, say uh, a flow over a cylinder, which looks like this, with nice forces rolling off the cylinder, uh, and let's say you have uh, a known diameter there uh, and you have a known surface temperature of say uh, 150 Celsius and you have uh, air at 8 meters per second at a free stream temperature of 20 then you know how to solve uh, for the total rate of heat transfer from that cylinder Okay, you would work out the Reynolds number, then you would go to uh, a set of tables like this one here. Um, you choose one of these correlations for a cylinder, maybe this one. You would find the Nusselt number, you'd find the heat transfer coefficient, and you'd find the uh, heat transfer rate, okay, which would be uh, H A. T infinity minus T S and A is the surface area of the cylinder. Now uh, that's an external convection problem. Okay, Internal convection is uh, a different story. Classic internal convection problem is uh, flow through a pipe and of course we find flow through a pipe in every uh, branch of engineering. It's, it's everywhere. Um, so let's say we have this long pipe um, and we have hot water flowing into the pipe. We have labelled the two ends of the pipe. We say our water is coming in at T1 equals 90 Celsius. Um, it's water. The inner surface of the pipe, say, is at 15. Um, and the question is, what's the heat transfer rate from the water to the walls of the pipe. So this might be some kind of a heating system where we have a supply of hot water uh, and we're pushing it through a pipe and we are uh, using that to heat uh, some air that's flowing around outside the pipe or maybe some water or some other fluid that's outside the pipe. Uh, of course we want to need the dimensions of the pipe here as well. So let's say we have a length of three meters uh, and a diameter of uh, 25 millimeters. You approach this just like you approach an external convection problem. You start with the Reynolds number. Uh, and it's a Reynolds number based on diameter here. Uh, rho V D over mu. Uh, I'm going to skip the details but that turns out to be about 46,200. Uh, and then you look for a correlation. So if you if you check through the small print on the Reynolds number and everything else, uh, this is the correlation that's going to work for us here. The Prandtl number at, th at this inlet condition is about uh, 1.84. We get a Nusselt number of 148, uh, and that gives us a convection coefficient of just over 4,000 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now we want to figure out what the total heat transfer rate is. So um, Q is equal to HA T minus TS where T is the temperature of the fluid but now we hit a problem. Um, what do we mean when we say temperature of the fluid. It's not as obvious as it is with our flow around a cylinder where the, there is a free stream, there's a T infinity of 20 degrees C, and there's this a large body of air around the cylinder. This time we have a very confined body of air inside the pipe. So let's think about what happens, or of uh, water, sorry. Let's think about what happens as that water uh, flows through the pipe. X is distance along the pipe. T is the temperature of the water. T is the temperature of the water. Uh, let's mark 
are in the temperature T1 and let's mark the pipe surface temperature Ts. Now the water comes in at temperature T1 uh, which is 90 degrees in our example Ts is 15 degrees there's a temperature difference there uh, so heat is going to be transferred from the hot water to the colder uh, pipe wall and the temperature of the water is going to drop as it moves through the pipe with this heat transfer process happening. Um, now after a short distance the temperature has dropped uh, a bit what happens next? Well what drives the heat transfer is the delta T the difference in temperature between the fluid and the uh, surface and after we've after the water has travelled a short distance into the pipe the delta T is now less than it was uh, at the inlet so this delta T is actually a function of X. Now if the delta T is smaller uh, the rate of heat transfer is smaller so as the water flows on the temperature keeps dropping but it doesn't drop quite as fast as it did before and so on. The rate of temperature drop gets less and less and the water uh, temperature follows uh, a curve like that. If the pipe is very very long uh, you would expect that the water is eventually going to become as cold as the pipe wall okay so it has some kind of behavior uh, like that and this is our problem the temperature of the water in the pipe is not uniform it's nothing like uniform so when we want to calculate the heat transfer rate what T can we use in here what temperature do we use the answer is you don't use this equation. This equation is just not uh, suitable. Uh, and before we come up with some alternative to this equation, we need to understand this temperature curve here and what it is and how it behaves. Now, if you look at the shape of this curve, you can kind of uh, argue on physical grounds that this is what the shape should be. Mathematically, if you look at that curve, it looks like uh, e to the minus x. Um, and it turns out that we can prove that it is an e to the minus x type curve uh, and the um, full detail of that is the temperature of the fluid minus Ts divided by the inlet temperature uh, Ti minus Ts is equal to e to the minus uh, pH over m dot Cp times x, m dot is the mass flow rate of the fluid, cp is the specific heat of the fluid, uh, p is the perimeter of the pipe cross section, okay, so for a circular pipe p is the circumference of the circle. Um, ti is the inlet temperature, ts is the pipe surface temperature. Um, now let's just uh, modify our uh, graph a little bit. Um, so instead of plotting the temperature I'm going to plot uh, this quantity here which is a dimensionless temperature difference. So it's uh, T minus Ts over Ti minus Ts. When x is 0 that's going to be equal to 1 okay because at x equals 0 T is equal to Ti so this fraction comes out to 1. At, if the pipe is long enough if the pipe is very long uh, the fluid comes out at a temperature of Ts so T is equal to Ts and it goes to 0 this asymptote is at 0. And that's consistent with our exponential here when x is 0 uh, the exponential evaluates to 1. When x goes to infinity, this exponential will go to 0. So this equation is one thing that makes internal convection heat transfer fundamentally different from external heat transfer convection uh, and makes it a bit more tricky. It's the fact that the temperature varies along the length of the pipe and that makes it harder to calculate overall heat transfer rates. Another difference between internal and external convection is that there is a bit more complexity in classifying just what is happening in the flow, what kind of flow you have. You can have laminar or turbulent flow just as you can in external convection 
but you also have uh, fundamentally different things happening along the length of the pipe. Over most of the length of the pipe, a lot of things are basically constant. Uh, and that is called the uh, region of fully developed flow. Near the entrance of the pipe, though, things are quite different, and we need to give that some special consideration. And this is complicated a bit more by the fact that we can have thermally fully developed flow or thermal entrance lengths, and we can have hydrodynamically fully developed flow, and we can have a hydrodynamic entrance length. So in internal convection heat transfer problems, there are really three levels that you need to consider. There is this level of classifying the basic characteristics of the flow. There is the level of the Nusselt number correlations. And there is the temperature variation along the pipe. You need to deal with all three of these things in order to properly calculate what's happening in an internal flow convection problem.